So a bit of a <laughs> foggy day today on this walk across uh, the Severn Bridge, well, certainly to the halfway point. Um, it really is a beautiful suspension bridge, uh, opened in 1966 by Queen Elizabeth II nonetheless. Some 27,000 tonnes of steel were used in its construction, and it was a balanced cantilever construction, uh, first of the type of that type of construction in the world at the time. Um, we're leaving from the Oss side uh, on the, the footbook bridge, which is really used for cycles, really, cyclists a lot of the time, and pedestrians, but primarily, yeah, cyclists go bombing down here. So if you do walk it, be aware, keep your wits about you. Don't suddenly cross, cross the road because you don't hear them and they go flying along now, particularly with these batteries they have. <laughs> Some half a million cubic metres of concrete were also used in the construction of this bridge, which has a span of, with the central section of being about a uh, thousand metres, the overall span is around 1600 metres with 300, if you like, outside of the main piers. But you know, the central span of 900 odd metres, 996 I think, was was the largest bridge in the world outside of America in 1966. So you know, quite an engineering feat, to put it mildly particularly across such a treacherous water as this. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it's quite an unforgiving waterway, the, uh, the, the Severn Estuary. You know, it's got a huge tidal flow. Um, sadly, as we'll see as we go across the bridge, you know, a number of people sadly did lose their life on this uh, enormous engineering project that took many, many years to build um, and, uh, and have lost their life since in, in the maintenance of this bridge. Um, but, but, you know, it's a... It's an incredible structure, and um, you know it's it's it, it is really is beautiful. And uh, as you'll see it emerging out of the fog later, uh, it really is still a sight to behold. Now, there's something about a suspension bridge; they've such majestic looking things, aren't they? Great engineering, um, really fantastic engineering. So uh, here we're coming up to the uh, first of the start of the sort of uh, bridge proper, if you like. Um, just coming up to that bit. It took three years to build this bridge, um, which was uh, yeah, probably pretty good going, really, when you consider the amount of materials that went into it and the, you know, the sheer um, uh, challenges of such a difficult environment to build in uh, across the, the estuary with some one of the highest tidal ranges in the world. Um, so, you know, it, it's testament to those that worked on it and designed it um, uh, that, that it was built in the first place, I think, you know, um, we're coming up to the remembrance plaques now um, for those who, uh, who, who died during the construction process uh, and those who sadly died during maintenance as well on a major upgrade in the uh, 80s to 90s. I remember Dad and I walking across the bridge back then and there was a 24-hour welding going on to strengthen it. <coughs> and it was really bouncy, you know, when the lorries were going by. All bridges flex, it still moves now. Uh, you'll probably see later or hear just a little bit of rattling sometimes off some of the looser fittings uh, where there's hatches and stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, they've got to flex, but uh, yeah, it was it was really flexy back then. And they obviously uh, significantly strengthened it because it moves a lot less now than it used to. Uh, and even drawing the strengthening, you could get to sections that were a lot more rigid. So leaving the Ost viaduct now, where the gravity anchor is, for these enormous cables, the suspension cables, uh, each one of those uh, enormous cables uh, has got something like 8,500 5 millimeter hot drawn uh, high tensile steel cables within it and uh, some 29,000 kilometers of wire were, were, were produced here to make those enormous cables and um, they are, of course, incredibly strong, but they have suffered from some internal corrosion over time. I mean, say it's a very exposed site. So in 2006, considerations were given, and we'll see them later, for a sort of hot air system that keeps them, keeps them warm and dry, uh, which uh, effectively prevents further corrosion. Um, but their ongoing uh, testing and checking is uh, still happening. I believe there's some works at the moment. There's some, some gantries at a place at the moment to, to check those cables. Also, you know, they're incredibly heavy um, and the towers themselves were strengthened as part of the sort of 80, 90s strengthening works because the, uh, the, the weight of the cables was effectively you know, crushing the top of the towers a little bit, you know, so 
They built, you know, incredible internal structures within the towers, I think, to strengthen them internally so the bridge doesn't look any different. Because, you know, it's grade-listed, the, the Severn Bridge, uh, as are the viaducts that um, join it to Wales and England. Uh, it is, you can see it for miles, and of course it's so elegant in terms of its uh, look from a distance. It does look the more beautiful of the two bridges. You know, the, the second seven crossing is marvellous. Oh, it says, this is an interesting point. You see these, um, these are the uh, anti-vibration dumbbells. Obviously, um, we, 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 those who are interested in engineering have probably seen the very famous pictures of the bridge in America, the Tacona Bridge, uh, which it suffered from aeroelastic vibration, effectively. It started to resonate with the wind because of the wind blowing over the shape of that bridge. But, you know, it can be a real issue, harmonics building up and vibrations building up, particularly in very windy, exposed sites such as this. So those uh, are anti-vibration dumbbells. They're called stock bridge dampers, and they are a mass damping system for basically dissipating energy associated with vibration that stop um, the, uh, you know, the, the resonant frequencies happening of these uh, large cables. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's, you know, we've seen the, the, the bridge, you know, the Millennium Bridge, of course, which uh, started uh, due to, due to foot, a lot of foot, foot passage at the time and people walking in step. But it did start to sort of vibrate and get a frequency that um, caused that bridge a load of trouble. So, you know, it's, it's um, not without consideration, even on huge structures such as this. They do start to start getting resonant frequencies. It can be really uh, damaging. So, you know, some clever use of these uh, little sort of like dumbbell weight things that go on the cables that just stop uh, and cancel out that tendency of, for things to vibrate like a guitar string. And you can see some of the hot air systems there. Can you see the sort of braided hoses? I think that's sort of part and parcel of the a system that provides warm air because if you get the right conditions, typically below 30% relative humidity, you can stop corrosion. Um, and that's what this system does. Uh, there's an air handling system that uh, blows uh, warm or certainly dry air uh, into into the this sort of uh, new network of um, sort of connections and uh, and pipes, and it and it keeps the corrosion at bay by keeping sort of very dry air blowing over stuff uh, at very low speeds, I guess. But um, you know, a clever system and used on the fourth bridge now as well. I understand. I think it's about. 40 million quid to install it. This is big civil engineering stuff. It's never going to be cheap. It's never going to be easy to do. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of thought and effort went into it. But it's protecting a, a real priceless asset, really. I mean, you think what this bridge would cost now, you know, a 1,600 metre suspension bridge in the modern age, it would be absolutely, well, billions, wouldn't it? So uh, it's, it's probably well a, a well worthwhile investment to look after it. Interestingly, the uh, these huge cable spans, we're seeing the uh, the big towers coming out of the fog in a minute. It's really good, good to see it. Uh, but the um, the cables within them talked about, I think, the 8,000 or so, five millimeter uh, wires within these big cables. Those, those, those wires can actually snap. And it sounds horrible, doesn't it? You think, oh, crikey, the thing's going to fall down. But it doesn't work like that because they're so sort of tightly bunched together. The uh, friction friction on those, uh, those 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 wires is enormous. So even one might break, um, it would still provide a structural element because you know a bit like if you I think put the pages of a, if you've ever got a, 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 the yellow pages got two copies of the yellow pages and put sort of thirty or forty pages together, try and pull them apart. The friction is enormous and you you can't. So uh, it's all around how friction works. I think that. Um, uh, but I think they do open the cables up a little bit now to get a bit of this um, more, more drier air through. So hopefully that won't affect that. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure everyone's thought about it properly. Got some great brains on projects like this. Um, yeah, there's the uh, dumbbell uh, dumbbells there. And of course, the enormous towers that were strengthened uh, internally to uh, help uh, the, with, the, with the weight of cables. Um, here's some, uh, one of the gantries that's used for maintenance of the bridge. Again, the brave souls that get on those things. Sadly, there has been some tragic accidents involving gantries on bridges, including uh, in, in the southwest uh, on a bridge that goes goes on the M5 too. Uh, let's hope they're a thing of the past and everyone's learnt from whatever mistakes needed to be learnt from those accidents and they are completely safe now. But um, you'd still have to be brave, wouldn't you, no matter how many uh, extra safety systems they've got now and everything else. But uh, it's still a um, brave brave folk that maintain these bridges. Yeah, here's the uh, central towers. Now, interestingly, 
these mighty towers stand 136 meters above mean water level. So they are literally ginormous structures, uh, as well as uh, being being quite elegant, I'd say. From a distance, this bridge, of course, looks like a bicycle wheel. It, it doesn't look like there's an overuse of material in it. They look slender and uh, with the, the nice white paint job as well really does stand out say it's a it's an icon for the southwest uh, and uh, it's, it's it's certainly you can see it from miles and miles around you know all the way as you go towards bristol towards the mall and places like that um you can see across the way the the, the beautiful seven bridge and uh you know even in this thick fog <laughs> you could you can see it it's a bit unfortunate i came down to film it before and uh the, this road uh, this pedestrian way was shut and then uh, came again today with all the gear and uh, here we are with thick fog but uh, it sort of looks quite uh, atmospheric <laughs> because of the atmosphere it's very atmospheric so I thought I'd film it anyway because uh, it's, it's yeah, a, bit diff a bit different to see it in fog anyway I've saved the last fact I think to last well I'm not sure if it's a fact or more of a an urban myth but when I was at university studying building engineering uh, we had a surveyor who reckoned that um, they had a bit of an issue uh, we're walking towards the middle of the span of the bridge for this video and when they constructed the bridge and got to the to join the two bits there was a bit of an error and um, they didn't really line up very well and uh, everyone was perplexed as how on earth they could have you know, all the engineering considerations have this particular issue this uh, tolerance issue and apparently it was to do with the curvature of the earth. The, um, the, 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 the surveyors that sort of set it out or whatever, or the engineers hadn't really considered the curvature of the earth over that distance, over that sort of span, you know, a thousand meters. It was enough to cause them a problem with the final connection of the two, two, two sides. Now, you know, I'm not sure if that's what really happened or not. Perhaps some, some people can make a, a note in the comments, but it's, it's certainly feasible as the Mythbusters would say, because it's such a big span. Um, and if that's the case, you know, what a thing to have considered, you know, I mean, it's probably not something we would consider in most normal uh, engineering circumstances, even construction servant circumstances, unless you're really talking big stuff, that you've got to think about the curvature of the earth. So uh, anyway, that's it for me. I'm switching the mic up now for this final bit of the walk, so you can hear the, the, the noise of the, the, the bridge. And uh, thanks very much for watching. And if you are have subscribed, I really do appreciate that. And uh, I hope to catch up with some more videos in the future. Cheers for now.